Hello, and welcome once again to Stuff and Things, where I like to talk about stuff, and occasionally even things. I'm your good friend Bradley, and today I have a tobacco review for you, and the tobacco which I will be reviewing is this. It is Dunhill, the Royal Yacht. Now this is a blend that has a lot of hype built up around it. It seems to be the kind of blend that people either love or hate. Very polarizing. It's considered to be a very strong blend in nicotine content. People talk about it in hushed whispers. So it's something that I haven't tried and I'd always meant to, meant to try it and I just hadn't gotten around to it for some reason. So I finally have a tin. I've been smoking it for a while. So let's get into the review. Got my notes here. So let's read out what we have. The blend. Dunhill, the Royal Yacht. It is produced by the Scandinavian Tobacco Group, as all the new Dunhill or the reissued Dunhill blends have been. It is available at smokingpipes.com. 50 gram tin like this is currently 1058. At Pipes and Cigars, it is 1088. And at Four Noggins, it is 1089. No bulk, as far as I know. Now, the tin description, eh, short and sweet, but let's read it here. Dunhill the Royal Yacht Mixture, a unique smoking mixture, exceedingly mellow blend with a grand rich flavor. I'd describe the Royal Yacht as a lot of things, but I don't know if mellow would be one of them, but we'll get into that. The blend type is a Virginia. This is pretty much or primarily a Virginia, straight Virginia blend. As far as I know, the only contents of the blend are Virginia tobaccos. And that brings us to our next category. The blend contains Virginia tobaccos. There's some sweet Virginias mixed with some sort of richer, um, earthier, deeper Virginias, darker Virginias. Um, if I light this up here, we'll get into the vital statistics. Let me grab my notes and peruse them right now. Flavoring. Now this is interesting. As I've mentioned in previous videos, pretty much every blend that you're going to get from a major tobacco company, any blend that's widely available, is going to have some sort of casing and some sort of added flavoring. Whether or not you detect it or not is the question. And usually when we talk about natural blends or English blends or Virginia blends as opposed to aromatic blends, the difference is that in aromatic blends, the blends have been topped, and it's a very obvious topping and an obvious flavor. This blend, the Royal Yacht, is cased, definitely, and there is a mild topping of a plum flavor, as far as I can detect and as far as my research has been able to show me. So there's a slight plum flavoring added, and you can detect the plum flavoring. So for flavoring, mild plum. The cut is a ribbon. And I'll show it to you right now. So here's our tin of Dunhill, the Royal Yacht Mixture. Very nice design, actually. I find that quite attractive. But the tin is empty because the tobacco came at a fairly nice moisture content. So I've placed it in this jar. You can see here, it is sort of a... It's a ribbon, technically, but it's not quite the same ribbon that the Dunhill blends usually come in. It's a little coarser, the cut's a little shorter. Um, and there you can see it's, it's basically just a blend of Virginias. So these are all the different types of Virginias blended together. But it's pretty easy to pack, pretty easy to light, stays lit well, burns well, no issues with that at all. Very well, back to the vital stats. Strength, medium strong. Taste, medium full. It's a pretty full bodied blend. The nicotine level, high. Now when I first smoked this, it was in the middle of the day, I just had lunch, I think, and I had been prepared with all these reviews I had read of people talking about just how strong the nicotine was in this blend, that it was something that was not for the faint of heart, you could never smoke it on an empty stomach. I had a bowl of it, and I could notice the nicotine, I could tell it was there, but I didn't find it particularly strong, really. And then I believe it was the next day Sometimes, depending on what I'm doing, I'll, I'll have a bowl in the morning. I don't always do that, but usually I have a, a light breakfast, a cup of coffee, and sometimes a bowl. And I decided to smoke the Royal Yacht. And when I had it that morning, uh, there was a little bit of the spins, that kind of oh, feeling you get in the back of your throat when you have a lot of nicotine in a blend, a little bit of lightheadedness. I could definitely feel it. It was definitely strong. 
I'm smoking it right now and I did just have lunch and you know my head's not spinning or anything but I can definitely feel the nicotine and if I can feel the nicotine I'm a pretty uh, I'm not a lightweight when it comes to nicotine so if I can feel it I'm gonna have to list it as strong so those of you who are perhaps more on the lightweight end of the spectrum people who are easily affected by high nicotine content be a little wary if you're smoking this blend you should not do it on an empty stomach you should make sure that maybe you're you're not out and about because if if it hits you you might get a little you might lose equilibrium a little bit you want to be perhaps sitting down on a full stomach when you try this blend out for the first time um, the moisture from tin this one was goldilocks and it's been interesting because I don't know, in the summer, a lot of the Dunhill tins I was getting were just right with moisture content. And then into the fall, it seemed like a lot of them were a little bit moist, needed a little drying time. But recently, the Dunhill tins I've been getting have been just perfect with moisture content. So this one was no exception. This was Goldilocks, just right out of the tin. And then the packaging, as I mentioned, let me hold this up one more time, 50 gram tin. Now the tin note, we'll open the jar into which I have placed it. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm. It's, uh, it's interesting. It's Virginia. You can tell that there's Virginia in this blend. It's not as sweet and high and grassy as some Virginia blends you'll smell. Like Orlick is the prime example for me that just smells like fresh cut hay, basically. This has a little bit of that, but it's more of that darker, earthier Virginia end of the spectrum. And then almost the smell of like leaf litter or if you've ever walked in the forests around here in the Pacific Northwest where I live are very damp and kind of dark and there's a very loamy um, I guess detritus on the forest floor of pine needles and all these things that are sort of rotting and decaying it kind of has that smell a little bit and then overall on top of all of that there is a pretty distinct plum odor not super strong but there's definitely a, a figgy plummy pruney, raisiny kind of odor that you can detect. And fairly sweet as well. And then the room note, it's hard to say with this. It's fairly strong, I think, and very tobacco-y. If you know what I mean, some Virginia blends sort of have that very tobacco-smelling room odor. And there's a little hint of sweetness to it as well. I don't think you really detect the plum in the room odor very much. So I would say, for people who are not a fan of pipe smoke, this probably isn't going to win you any friends at all. Um, I wouldn't call it pleasant for people who don't like pipe smoke, but it's not, it's not a heavy incense Latakia smell, nor is it a nice fresh bakery sort of vapor smell, Virginia smell. It's kind of a strong tobacco smell, if that makes sense. So let's get to the actual review here. I'm about halfway through the bowl as per usual. Light it up again. You know, as I'm smoking this, the thought that keeps occurring to me over and over is someone took a plum and squeezed it over my nice Virginia blend. That's kind of what I'm getting. And I have to say, the very first bowl I had of this, I was not impressed. I wasn't a fan. And for me, I think it is the topping. It is the plum flavor added. And after I had smoked a couple more bowls, that seemed to recede a little bit. The first bowl I had, it was very, very noticeable and it almost ruined my enjoyment of the blend completely. I could just taste the plum. I could taste this topping and it was kind of sugary. It's not anywhere near, it's not an aromatic. Don't think this is an aromatic. It's not a gloopy, sugary topping. And you know, it's not a, a, an American Cavendish that's just topped with a very, very strong chemical-y sort of flavor. This tastes a lot more natural. It's much more nuanced and a lighter flavoring, but you can definitely taste it there. You can definitely taste the plum. Um, and you can definitely taste the blend of sweeter Virginias with the darker Virginias, kind of richer Virginias. The Virginias in this, if I can say Virginias as many times as possible, are really good. They're really nice quality Virginias, and it's a really nice Virginia blend, actually. Um, 
and there's a little bit of the hay, a little bit of the bread, a lot of the, the normal profiles you'll get from Virginia tobaccos. But as a whole, I would say it's more on the darker, earthier end of the Virginia spectrum as opposed to the bright, hay-like end of the Virginia spectrum. spectrum. Um, it's a rich, full-flavored Virginia blend. It's interesting because the taste is almost reminiscent of vapors that I've had because when you have Perique added into a blend, a Virginia blend, in addition to the spiciness and the mouthfeel and in the nose that the, that the Perique can impart, you also get a sort of raisiny kind of figgy note as well sometimes. And this has that, but it's not because Perique has been added, it's because there's been a plum topping added. And as I'm smoking this, I just keep thinking, it's okay, I don't mind it, but I would really, really like it if instead of it tasting like there was Perique in here, why not just put Perique in here? And obviously that makes it a different blend. It makes it a vapor, and this is supposed to be a Virginia blend with a little bit of extra flavoring. But my personal preference, my tastes dictate to me that I would, I would like this blend more if there was no topping. That's just kind of where I come down on it. As I've smoked more and more of this tin, my opinion of the blend has improved. When I first smoked it, I didn't really like it very much at all. And now it's to the point where, eh, it's not bad. But it's not something that I think I would buy any more of. And a lot of that is just my own personal prejudices against added flavoring to blends. It always just feels slightly artificial to me. I would just prefer the natural tobacco flavor. So. If you're someone who doesn't mind that, if you like a little bit of topping, you like a little added sweetness, if you like plums, then you might very well like this blend a lot. I know some people really love it. A lot of people really love it. If you're someone who enjoys a really nice nicotine hit, you might really enjoy this blend. It's funny because a lot of the reviews I read, it seems like people talk about how they crave the Royal Yacht. And when they're not smoking it, they're thinking about smoking it and they want to smoke it and they plan their day around when they're going to be able to smoke it. And part of me wonders if that has something to do with the nicotine content. I've had some other blends that are supposedly very high in nicotine, um, Jackknife Plug, I've had Peterson Irish Flake, and they're pretty much on par, I think, with the Royal Yacht. I wouldn't say that the Royal Yacht is necessarily higher in nicotine than those blends. But sometimes I wonder if these blends are so highly praised simply because there's so much nicotine and the people who love them so much do so because their body craves that nicotine. I don't know. I think it's definitely possible for you to love this blend despite, of the, nicotine, despite the nicotine, despite the added flavoring, or because of the added flavoring, you may just enjoy the blend for what it is. It is a really high quality Virginia blend it's just the topping doesn't do it for me. If you don't mind the topping, you don't mind the added sweetness, you don't mind the taste of plums, then check out the Royal Yacht. For me, meh, I think I'll pass. So that's been my review of Dunhill's The Royal Yacht. Thank you so much for watching. I've been your good friend Bradley. You have been the audience. This has been Stuff and Things reviewing The Royal Yacht by Dunhill. Good day.